Hello. Welcome back. Anna here, and we're back with another creepy haunting of Forgotten Hollow, where we recreate real haunted houses in The Sims 4. Lizzie Borden took an axe and gave her mother 40 wax, and when she saw what she had done, she gave her father 41. You may know this children's rhyme, something that you may have grown up with saying or hearing, but do you really know the story behind it? Was Lizzie Borden just a sweet Sunday school teacher, unfairly blamed for her parents' deaths, or did she brutally plan out to murder them and get away with it? Early on the morning of August 4th, 1892, the Borden house was alive with activity though the youngest daughter, Lizzie Borden, slept in. The maid, a respectable Irish immigrant by the name of Bridget Sullivan, served breakfast to the patriarch, Andrew, and his wife, Abby, as usual. The eldest Borden daughter, Emma, was away visiting friends. Lizzie Borden, an unmarried 32-year-old Sunday school teacher, was the last to join her family coming downstairs after her uncle, John Morse, who had arrived unexpectedly for a visit the day before, left the house. Lizzie Borden decided against eating breakfast. Her father, Andrew, decided to go downtown Fall River, Massachusetts, where the family lived, at around nine in the morning. It would be the last time he left his home alive. The Bordens were prosperous, and their patriarch served on the boards of several banks while working as a commercial landlord. In her husband's absence, Abby went upstairs to make the bed where Morse had slept the night before. She would leave the room only one more time, looking for fresh pillowcases. Meanwhile, Andrew had returned home. The maid let him in, and Lizzie came downstairs, claiming that Mrs. Borden had left the house after receiving a note saying that a friend was sick. Lizzie and Emma always referred to Abby, their stepmother, with whom they had an unfriendly relationship, as Mrs. Borden. Her father believed the story and retreated to his room, where he would remain for only a few minutes, before coming back downstairs and settling on a sofa in the sitting room. Sullivan who was not feeling well. She reported throwing up that morning, perhaps from the flu that had traveled around the house days prior, went to rest in her room where she fell asleep. According to Sullivan's testimony during Lizzie Borden's trial, she only awoke when she heard Lizzie screaming that her father was dead. Lizzie Borden later said that she found her father dead, sprawled out on the couch, and covered in blood, his face so badly disfigured that he was unrecognizable. After the screaming, Sullivan ran to fetch the doctor and a neighborhood friend of Lizzie's, but the commotion had attracted the attention of neighbors who summoned the police. At this point, Abby's whereabouts were still unknown. Lizzie Borden told the gathering crowd of concerned neighbors the same story she told her father, that her stepmother had received a note asking her to leave the house. Lizzie also mentioned that her parents had been ill in the previous days and that she suspected their milk had been poisoned. After returning with a local doctor named Seabury Bowen, Bridget checked for Abby upstairs, where she found her limp body lying face down in a pool of her own blood. Abby Borden had been struck 19 times with a hatchet. Andrew had been hit 11 times with the same weapon. One of Andrew's eyes had been cut in half, and his nose had been completely severed from his face. Abby's blood was dark and congealed, leading Bowen to believe that she had been killed first. The county medical examiner, Dr. Dolan, 
looked at the bodies after Bowen. Later, Dolan would have the Borden's stomachs removed and tested. No evidence that the couple had been poisoned was ever found. The investigation. At first, the police did not suspect Lizzie Borden. After all, she was a spinster from a respected and well-off family. And Lizzie swore to district attorney, Hasia Carlton, that she was in the barn looking for a piece of iron when the attacks took place. In the days after the murders, an abundance of clues that all led to dead ends confused the investigation even further. A bloody hatchet was found on a neighboring farm, but it had been used to kill chickens. A man, seen wandering around the Borden's property, had an airtight alibi for the time of the murders. Even Sullivan was a suspect before the police finally zeroed in on Lizzie. There was no physical evidence, not even a bloody scrap of clothing to implicate Lizzie. It was just that no one else could have done it. The timeline doesn't make sense any other way. If Abby was killed early in the morning, the murderer, if it wasn't Lizzie or Sullivan, would have hidden in the house for several hours, waiting for Andrew's return. He or she would have risked being spotted by Lizzie or Sullivan. And what about the note Lizzie claimed her stepmother received? Abby had clearly never made it out of the house. So where was it? Lizzie told her friend Alice Russell that her stepmother may have accidentally burned it. Eventually, investigators also discovered that the day before the murders took place, Lizzie had tried to buy prussic acid, otherwise known as cyanide, from a drugstore, but the clerk said she needed a prescription before she could purchase it. That evening, Lizzie visited Russell. In her testimony at the inquest, Russell said that Lizzie was anxious that somebody might be threatening her father. She confided that these enemies might want to hurt her family. A few days after the murders, Russell saw Lizzie burning one of her dresses at the stove in her house. When Russell asked her why she was destroying the dress, Lizzie said that it was stained and could no longer be worn. After Russell revealed this incident at the inquest, the presiding judge charged Lizzie Borden with the murders. The trial. The trial of Lizzie Borden lasted 14 days. It was a media sensation. Newspaper headlines screamed, Lizzie Borden, defense opens. Reporters from Boston and New York crowded the courtroom day after day. They called it the Great Trial. Though Lizzie never testified during the trial, she was still the star of the show. At one point, a piece of tissue paper covering the skull of her father fell to the floor. Lizzie caught sight of the bludgeoned skull and fainted. But presenting the skulls of the murdered Bordens turned out in Lizzie's favor. Her lawyer reasoned that whoever caused such extreme damage must have been covered in blood after the incident, but Lizzie's clothes were perfectly clean. This has led some to believe that she committed the murders naked. The defense was able to produce witnesses who saw Lizzie leave the barn at the time of the murders or who claimed to see strange characters lurking around the property, enough, at least, to create reasonable doubt for Lizzie's guilt. The defense was also able to have the drugstore clerk's testimony that Lizzie had tried to buy poison dismissed on the basis that it was irrelevant and prejudicial. On June 19th, Lizzie was found 
not guilty of murdering Andrew and Abby. She and her sister, Emma, who inherited their father's estate, bought a house in the fashionable part of Fall River. The aftermath. The sisters lived peacefully at Fall River until 1904, when Lizzie Borden, now calling herself Lisbeth, met an actress named Nance O'Neill. The pair formed a strong bond. Some speculate they were lovers, but Emma did not approve. Two years after Lizzie met Nance, Emma moved out of the house they shared. Lizzie Borden lived out the rest of her days in relative quiet and privacy before dying in 1927 at the age of 67. She took whatever secret she had about the murders of her parents to her grave. But that hasn't stopped obsessed followers of her story from forming theories of their own. Some think Andrew's illegitimate son, William, committed the crime, and that Lizzie and Emma conspired to cover up his involvement. Or, more likely, that the two sisters made the plans, while Lizzie alone carried out the actual murders. Others think Lizzie and Sullivan were having an affair and murdered the Bordens together. In 2012, journals kept by Lizzie's lawyer, Andrew Jackson Jennings, were obtained by the Fall River Historical Society. The journals revealed Jennings' direct observations of his client, who history remembers as cold-blooded and callous. But Jennings saw a sensitive side to Lizzie, a woman grieving for her loss. The notebooks did not, however, bring the public any closer to knowing who actually killed the Bordens. The murders of Andrew and Abby Borden continued to fascinate the public more than a hundred years after Lizzie Borden's acquittal. People continue to flock to Fall River, Massachusetts, to visit the site of the murders, which has now been turned into a museum, chronicling the history of the murders. Some visitors claim that the house is still haunted by the ghosts of Andrew and Abby Borden, and one thing everyone can agree on is that the grisly murders, the sensational Lizzie Borden trial, and the unsolved debate about the true identity of the murder continues to fascinate as one of America's most notorious murder cases of all time. Guests at the bed and breakfast have reported hearing the voice of a woman weeping softly at night. Some have reported seeing shoes move by themselves across the floor. Others have also reported seeing an older woman wearing a traditional dress tuck them in at night. Television crews, as well as paranormal investigators, have reported lights flickering, their video equipment turning on and off by themselves, and cameras working even when no one is there to operate them. The ghosts of Abby and Andrew, Lizzie's father and stepmother, are said to still haunt the house. Most who enter this house that has been restored to its 19th century appearance report feelings of overwhelming sadness. Tour guides mention being touched by unseen hands. Many report something tugging at their clothes. There have been reports of people seeing the apparitions of Andrew, Abby, and Lizzie in the home. Strange myths have also been observed. There are also reports of something unseen whispering in people's ears. One of the strangest phenomena to happen occurs by the bed in the guest room where Abby Borden was killed. Countless people have closed their eyes and stood on the spot where she died. They all report feeling as if someone shoved or pushed them on the back. Others feel a force coming through the floor that tries to tip them over. Witnesses also mention hearing children's laughter 
in the home's attic. One folklore belief is that the spirits in the house can be bribed to leave the living alone. Visitors often place a few coins on Mr. Borden's bureau, while the young spirits respond best to small toy offerings. So, after hearing all of that, what do you think happened to Lizzie's father and stepmother? Do you think she's to blame? Or was someone else in on it? Or was this a random chance and they just got really unlucky? Leave a comment and let me know your thoughts about this story. Do you have any other theories? Please let me know. Okay, hello everyone. Anna here. I hope you enjoyed our story about Lizzie Borden today. Now, we still got about another 15 minutes left in the build. You'll see me decorating a lot, trying to get the theme and the style to fit this type of house and do it justice, you know? I had a lot of fun doing this build. Thank you for listening and watching so far. If you've made it to this point, I appreciate you. If you haven't liked the video yet and you're still here, please maybe do that and leave a comment. You know, all the YouTube things helps get my videos seen and out there and available for more people to find. So yeah, this came together really well. We got a ton of rooms. This took me all week. I think I started it on Tuesday and spent, you know, a couple hours every day. And then Saturday I spent like all day decorating like two of the stories so I thought the outside was easy because like shape wise color wise is simple it's a rectangle right <laughs> so I love that and that's also why I wanted to do a house that was a little more simple in shape than the um, Ohio State Reformatory which is one that you should definitely check out as well but this is the third in my series of the creepy hauntings of Forgotten Hollow. And yeah, I got two more to do to fill up the lot and then I'll probably share the save file. Actually, I'm going to also create the people that would live in these houses or the people that are haunting these houses. And then uh, that'll be like a final video to wrap up this series. And then from there, I'll decide if I'm going to do more. But I really kind of like it. I like the, like, trying to be spooky, trying to be creepy vibes. I don't know. I hope I portray it well enough. It's hard for me to slow down and, like, calmly and, like, kind of, like, creepily read things. <laughs> so I'm, I'm practicing. I do feel like I've already gotten better at it. So if you watch the first video and then now um, you're watching this as my third one, hopefully you see an improvement in my storytelling. I'm trying, okay? <laughs> but this was so much fun. I love the the designs. And I love that Sims has a good amount of, like, Victorian styles to work with. So you do see. I do wish we had a little bit more wallpaper options. Because I did uh, repeat some of them or use the same ones in a slightly different color. Because there wasn't a lot. And I tried to make it so that... Well, I did make it so that this build is... CC free so you can download it if you search Lizzie Borden's house on the gallery under Pirate Queen Anna I know I still need to change my name on there but I kind of want to leave it I don't know whatever <laughs> it's fine and yeah a lot of fun build to build uh, a lot of time researching um, I did go to Google Maps again and like do a virtual tour of the area and try to get pictures of every room. So I, at least every room may not be in the right like position. But every room here is kind of inspired by a different room that I saw in their house. Because of the way that Sims layouts are. Things tend to be a little funkier and harder to fit. And also in the floor plan I could not find bathrooms. So I kind of just made up where the bathrooms were. I don't know what they look like either. <laughs> 
So the only pictures I found were of the bedrooms, the parlor, the kitchen, the living area. Those all are pretty close to what I could recreate, um, inspired by, you know, the original house. <laughs> Here's Lizzie's room. This should, this should be her bedroom, yeah. Uh, this was a guest bedroom on that side. And yeah, I, I, I cycle through a lot of things here. This took me a while. I think it's about four hours of footage sped up to about 800, 850% speed. <laughs> so really fast. And then many more hours of me twiddling around and uh, deciding what I want to use. Because I, I, how I record this is I record it and I pause. If I'm like stuck on what I want to put down next or if I'm looking for an item that I can't find uh, and I'm not sure what I'm looking for. I just search through like the de decorations for like a couple minutes. I'll pause my recording so then you won't see me cycle through all those things too much. And I think it makes it at least a little bit sleeker. But then like when I place everything down, you'll see it most of the time. A couple times I might have forgotten to unpause for a minute. But Overall, you are seeing the full speed build just with some pauses where I am obviously pretty slow. I'm pretty slow and still getting used to like the debug items um, so that I can, you know, there's so many different things that where I kind of just get lost searching through debug for a long time and that can slow me down. But in the end, it ends up with me picking the right items that I feel work really well. So I used a lot of paintings of like the vampire paintings and the really expensive, uh, you know, extravagant Victorian looking paintings. So the house price is um, 227000 ish in the end. So, you know, if you move someone in here, turn on uh, free real estate on. <laughs> Otherwise, you might have some trouble affording it or it could be a goal of you to build your way up into living in this house and the house does have the traits of haunted creepy crawlies and something else I, I always forget the third one i pick for this but pretty much all these houses are haunted houses so it would be quite fun to plan and actually i'm i might do if you guys want to see uh later do like a series where i play through one of the families in one of these houses so let me know leave me a comment about which one so far, if you've seen my other two videos of King's Tavern and the Ohio State Reformatory, tell me which one you think would make for the best story. Like I could do like a, you know, a week long playthrough or something where we where we just play it and uh, see what happens <laughs> and try not to, you know, let anything crazy happen to the people or we play it out and actually like kill them as they got killed. Which would be hard in The Sims. I don't think you can kill people with an axe or a hatchet. But I have the extreme violence mod. So that's maybe still a possibility. Mm, I'll think about it. <laughs> but yeah, which one of these so far would you like to see me actually play as the people in The Sims? And we can make up a story or do something fun with it. But just let me know. Because I want to do this for you guys. I know a lot of people actually are like my Rags to Riches series, which is still going on, obviously. You should totally watch that if you haven't yet. And a couple new episodes will be coming this week. Don't you worry. I did stream it last week. So if you saw it on stream or you can wait till the videos come out. They usually come out a week or two after I stream them. Basically. And I've been streaming more. So I'm hoping to be around a lot more on the YouTube only this is the only place i'm making content and like tiktok and instagram whatever but like the only place i'm you know actually spending a lot of uh my focus time so uh, yeah i hope you guys are liking it make sure you come by when i'm live if you get that notification or turn on your notifications for the channels to know when i go live and join our discord because discord is where all the cool kids hang out and chat and you can, like, bug me when I'm not around and when I'm working on stuff. <laughs> I'm always working. I'm always online, but I'm always doing something that uh, keeps me busy. So I may not always respond on Discord, but I will at some point, <laughs> depending on what I'm doing. But, yeah, I, like, all these videos take so long, but I really love doing them. 
and I'm not one to rush it. Like I could have rushed this out and maybe got it in and out like two days ago. But I would have stressed myself out more and I'm already like pretty good at stressing myself <laughs> with things. So I tried to uh, not with this build and I, I thought this was going to take me only a couple days. But then once I got to the inside, I realized the floor plan was kind of weird and that it was a basement and two stories and an attic, which I wasn't a quite aware of at first. I thought it was just the two stories. So like having the extra, the attic was easy. Like one bedroom up here is supposed to be an unfinished bedroom. And the second one is uh, the other sister's bedroom, I think. Yeah, the pink one. So the issue with the attic is how you build in an attic. In The Sims, you don't see the walls anyway, so they're done, they're there, but you can't see them, otherwise, you'll see the, the uh, roof instead of the room. So, oh, I did find that lounge chair and switched it out and moved this up here, made like a mini living room up here. I don't know why, I just kind of thought, hey, this looks nice, let's uh do something because, yeah, we didn't really make a living room that had a TV in it because I was trying to keep it true to you know the actual location and I had there's no TVs supposedly but I was like you know what they need one this is sims they need one I also made an office which I think there the office was on the floor plan um but I put a computer and other stuff bookcase stuff like that but I don't know if it's true to what it looks like because I don't think I had a picture of the office so I just kind of made an office to fit this style a lot of these uh vampire paintings spooky stuff I did recently get the spooky pack finally <laughs> just barely in time and then I picked up the laundry pack because I was like they had a laundry room down here and I didn't know how to recreate a laundry room without it so luckily all the packs are on sale right now so I got it for like eight bucks I'm like whatever it's it's cheap anyway and it was something I really felt like I was missing in a lot of my builds was you know laundry so this is the first time I used laundry items and yeah I think it turns out okay I know in the real house, they didn't have actual washing machines. They had like a, one of those like barrels with water in it and then like the washboard thing. But you know, this is a modern Sims updated version of this house. So I did add the things to make it more home, homey and happy. <laughs> Even though, you know, two people were brutally murdered here, but that's okay. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So yeah, this was, this was great. And then I threw a bathroom in down here because I was like, we only have two bathrooms. I feel like we needed one more. So yeah, there's a third bathroom in the basement. The basement was kind of hard layout wise to fill, but I tried to kind of recreate. There was supposedly like a coal room. So what you're seeing uh, over there is, you know, like coal and little trays of coal. I don't know why, I guess for heating the house. Mm, I, I don't know. I don't know. It was there. And wood. I had lots of wood for uh for the fireplaces and all that. So it was quite interesting to <laughs> design, especially down here. But I think I, I think I made it work. I don't know. What do you think? I'm pretty happy with it overall and I don't know. I really like doing these builds. I like learning the stories because like this is something that yeah, I've heard my whole life, but I never really paid attention to what the story was about or what happened to the people. So this is a, currently a bed and breakfast that is open today. Well, I don't know about right now because of COVID, but in general, it's been open, then you can stay here. And so a lot of the things that I uh, read were about people's experiences, staying the night here and uh, paranormal investigators uh, finding out different things, um, being in this house and the spirits being, you know, active and stuff like that is quite interesting to hear about and yeah I think we're coming up on the final yeah I just did some you know cracks and stuff in the basement nowhere else has the cracks but I felt like the basement kind of was more of a rundown place the rest of the house is new and like fancy and really well done but the basement was kind of left to be more raw I guess and so, yeah, you're seeing all the basically screenshots. I learned how to use the camera tool cinematic, and I think uh, it makes it a little bit better than just screenshots because it's like 
you're actually in the house kind of moving through it so i hope you guys enjoy this the way i've uh, done this in the past two videos instead of just taking a bunch of pictures it's like um like a 3d screenshot you know or like a 360 uh camera i feel like where it kind of makes you feel like you're there going underground always is kind of weird with the basement because everything's black around it but you know can't really avoid that being the sims and yeah anyways i hope you really like the build i had a lot of fun doing it and i'm super happy to be doing this let me know if you want to see more if there's another location you want to see me recreate i haven't decided on my next one yet i'm thinking of maybe the bly manor from the from the netflix show or the one from ratchet because the um the location is so beautiful and it's like different it's like you know it's a it's a it's like a rich person's clinical um psychiatrist hospital so i kind of want to recreate that and it would look it would be like a totally different look and it's more a little bit more modern but yeah so far so good um you can download this and the ohio state reformatory i will add the links to the description and yeah go find on the gallery <laughs> make sure you follow me on the gallery too pirate queen anna i post tons of builds shells all kinds of goodies all the time and yes thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in another video Bye bye